Hi everyone, welcome to the mini mock focusing on mapping slums with remote sensing. My name is Olabisi Obaito, and for the next one hour, we will briefly describe slums, the approaches utilized in mapping slums, and also give a practical application of remote sensing in slum mapping. So let's get on with it. Urbanization is not a problem. Considering over 80% of the global GDP is generated in cities. However, many cities, especially in the global south, have experienced urbanization with limited or no development. And one of the consequences of this process is slum proliferations in the region's urban area. Before we proceed, let us briefly describe what we mean by slum. Though it is very difficult to get a unified description of what we mean by slum. But for this mini mock, we will describe slum as a neighborhood that is overcrowded, has poor housing quality, inadequate facilities, and deviates from the general plan of a city. Considering the description given in the previous slide, we may expect that we ought, we may expect that um, few people reside in such places, but this is not the case in the global south, where we have over sixty percent of the urban residents residing in slums. This has led to different policies and programs focusing on slum reduction. Among them is the SDG goals. Precisely, specifically, goal 11.1, .1, with one of its targets um, promoting upgrading, upgrading slums by 2030. However, before any intervention can take place, we must first of all identify and map all slums based on their characteristics. So let us proceed and look at different approaches that have been applied in mapping slums. We can broadly classify these approaches into three. One, the use of sensor data through participatory approach, and three, use of remote sensing on spatial data. So let us briefly describe these approaches and see how it has been used to map slums. The first approach we talk about is a sensor-based approach, which utilizes data obtained from sensor survey to delineate slum areas. Here, mapping is based on aggregating slum household data according to the enumeration areas. So any enumeration area with more than 50% of its population deprived of the indicators we mentioned in the previous slide is declared a slum. While this approach is usually considered the best approach, it also has been criticized because of its silence on some of the criteria that have been used to describe slum, such as facilities available in the community. Furthermore, many countries do not have recent data for each enumeration areas, and when they do have data, it is usually not so reliable to use in mapping slums. The second approach is the participatory approach, which involves the coming together of stakeholders such as experts, government, and slum dwellers to map slum boundary. This is also a very good approach because it involves knowledge of experts as well as local contents to map slums. Though, to get a detailed information through this method is time consuming, especially in cities with many slums. The third approach 
is the use of satellite imagery and other spatial data types to delineate slums. This is possible because slums, like any other land use type, have their own spatial location and characteristics, which differs from non-slum environment. Characteristics such as opposite high density building pattern, flood prone zones, structure, size, and condition of road network can be characterized using high resolution satellite imagery. Furthermore, um, satellite image can help to identify some of the drivers of slum development. It can also help us to provide the spatial to provide information on the spatial distribution and heterogeneity of slums, which you cannot get from traditional data collection methods such as sensor data. With all these advantages, it also has some limitations, such as um, the difficulties in differentiating between the spectral and textural properties of urban landscapes. This can lead to misrepresentation of slums. Remote sensing data can support achieving the SDG target 11.1 because, number one, it is updated regularly. Through that, we can monitor slum development and also create an up-to-date database on slum development, which can serve as basis for intervention at periodic, at different time. Furthermore, it can help us to identify the drivers of slum development.